And uh, now I leave the floor to, uh, to Marc-Antoine, uh, who is the uh, director of the Center for Energy and Climate at IFRI. And we will have the real challenge tomorrow morning uh, to present uh, uh, the uh, discussion of this session. <laughs> so you may perhaps summarize a Thank little you. bit or comments yes. on what you heard. Uh, I think Narendra woke us all up, so I'll try to <laughs> I'll try to continue in that vein. Um, now I think um, in taking a global perspective, um, let's face it, Narendra, yes, you rightly said we need to talk more with one another, and I think still this is also a place where actually we are talking, and, uh, and I think that's very important. Now, let's face it, there is a very important momentum now. We have John Kerry meeting his Chinese uh, counterpart, uh, uh, Genoa, as we speak now, during several days, and uh, and then we'll have the Biden Xi Jinping meeting at APEC in San Francisco. And so this is unique because there is no uh, major COP development possible unless the Chinese and the Americans don't agree. And this is a momentum for them to agree. So I think we can be uh, expecting that maybe something will happen there. The second point is on what will it happen. Well, I think, and, and Nicola mentioned it, yes, the US has to do much more on fugitive methane emissions, dramatically more. It has to ramp up finance in that. And the Chinese need to peak their emissions way before 2030. And, and actually, both could do that. And then, of course, uh, to uh, phase down coal, I think this is uh, possible. And, and for India, Narena, it's a specific case. You emit one ton of CO2 per inhabitant when the Chinese do approximately 13 or 14, the Americans 16, and the year the UAE or Saudi Arabia 18. So there's a difference. But it brings me to my second point. We have to rightly discuss hydrocarbons, yes? And our governments understood this also, because uh, I don't know how many phone calls Patrick Pouyanné or the Shell CEO got from governments, uh, you know, help me here, help me there, what can you do? But it's a new reality. So they were not going to disappear. And energy security is central also in our country. So, so what we need to have a discussion on is an orderly transformation of the hydrocarbons. Yes, energy security is right. But the problem is if it's Iran or Russia that put energy security in the final declaration, everybody understands why. Right? So, um, so I think um, this is clear and avenue. And the story is the following. We need a predictable, stable oil price that allows consumers to afford the energy, but still to transition, the companies and the governments to have the resources to invest in the alternatives. But the problem is we need to have this discussion, and, and I think the discussion has gone away. That there were institutions for that, there were ideas for that, but I think it should be reinvested. And what we also need is that you, for example, India, tell countries here in the Middle East, Look, if we look at the map of renewables in the world, we almost see nothing here in this region. How can that be with all the money that you have? And then the second thing that you should also tell, because so far it's been France that has been pushing heavily for that, it's how come the emerging economies are deprived of liquidity to invest into all these renewables, etc. right? If we look at the current financial system, the risk in, in emerging economies is much higher than in Europe. It's much higher than in many places where actually the investments are required, right? So this discussion has to be also taken up front uh, by, by you, and hopefully uh, there will be greater financial commitments here from countries in the regions towards uh, uh, financing uh, these low-carbon technologies and their deployment. Um, if you allow me just a word also, I think uh, India and other countries, especially us, and uh, it was hinted several times, now we have the objectives, now we know uh, that the technologies work, we know that the costs went down, although they are up again because of interest rate, etc. What we need to focus on is value chains. Everyone has to invest into value chains, and, uh, and here the states will have a major role to play. They have to provide guarantees, etc., etc., because otherwise uh, it will be very difficult for the scale-up and the de-risking. Um, last but not least, uh, if you allow me, uh, perhaps uh, uh, a word uh, on, you know, three years ago, four years ago, everybody was planning for an energy transition with low oil prices, with low gas prices. Well, now we will have a transition with high oil prices. And, and I think that's, uh, that's, that offers quite some interesting momentum. Of course, everybody's suffering, hence the need to, to orderly organize all that. But the point is, 
this is a unique opportunity to accelerate. And I think Total Energy, correct me if I'm wrong, but you would not be able to commit that much money to renewables, which are providing less you know, profits, if you didn't have these higher oil prices. And, and countries like here, obviously, uh, would be able to commit less to meet their targets uh, if the oil price was $50. So, uh, so let's work on this opportunity, I think. And, um, and, uh, and, and also, let's, let's get out of this binary situation where, you know, the North thinks only about itself, the South is demanding and is the victim. I think it's much more complex, but uh, in any case, you're right, we need to work more together. Thank you.